Now, the Moderna vaccine will begin distribution in the UK today, with the first doses being administered at a hospital in Wales. It comes as a trial giving children the AstraZeneca vaccine has been halted over the potential link to a very small number of blood clots. But scientists stress there are no safety concerns with the study. Joining us now is the Business Minister, Paul Scully. Good morning to you. We've had plenty of questions in from our viewers about this, of course. Some have already had the first AstraZeneca jab. Uh, some have got young children, or I should say young children, or young adults in their family who've got underlying health conditions and they're now worried about whether they should have the second one. Uh, this concern is, of course, around blood clots in the younger age group uh, and that versus the risks of getting COVID and potentially dying from it. How worried um, are you and should we be, people who are getting the text messages to go for their AstraZeneca jab today? Yeah, no, I've had an AstraZeneca vaccine myself, the first dose. And no, absolutely, look, I think the MHRA and uh, AstraZeneca themselves will continue to look at the latest information, the latest data. But the advice is absolutely clear from both of them. If you are invited to have your vaccination, either first dose or second dose, please do go and get it. You are far safer getting the vaccine than the very small uh, probability uh, that, that is appearing here. And it, within that probability, there's no proven causation between the two. So that's why they will look at the, the link. But it's absolutely uh, the best advice to go and get that jab. But G Germany has announced that they are banning the vaccine at the moment for people under 60. Is there a possibility, even a possibility, that that could happen here in the UK? Well, I've seen no uh, a, a suggestion that that was even the case um, it, here in the UK. Um, the, the MHRA have been really clear that you, you're more likely to, uh, um, to have side effects of um, taking aspirin. Uh, than, than you are with this. It's 0 0.000016 of a percent that uh, that there are um, people um, having clots. And as I say, that's not even necessarily a causation, a, a, a causal link between the two. So it's really important to keep this in perspective. You're far safer getting the jab that will keep you healthy, keep everyone else healthy, and of course, get us back to a semblance of normal life. Yeah. But until um, the, that research is, is done, there is a bit of time in hand. Do you think that there is a possibility that there will be a slowdown of the rollout of the AstraZeneca jab for those who are perhaps under 40? Well, I think so, not because of, of this reason. I think the biggest risk, actually, to people's safety is, is the um, speculation around it. So I think that's, that's really um, uh, important that we remember that. But no, what we're finding is that we're on pl plans for the vaccination um, uh, program itself. The supply it itself will always go up and down. We're catching up with the second uh, doses now because those people that went at the beginning have had their 12 weeks. Um, but there's, there's no sense that we need to slow down for any other reasons. But clearly, as you say, the, the tests are paused for children, but that's very different for, um, uh, for the age groups that you're talking about. Now, what's the situation with COVID passports? There's so much confusion about this now. And we heard from the Prime Minister earlier this week and he said he seemed to say that this was only ever going to apply to big, large-scale events. There are now appear to be some sort of reports coming and, and claiming to be coming from Number 10 that actually it could apply to shops as well. I mean, this is kind of now becoming typical of the mixed messages that the, the country has faced for over a year now regarding this COVID vaccine. Can you give us some clarity? What is going on here? It seems that people are really are concerned. Well, at one point, we're saying everything is opening up. The other point, we're saying, well, actually, you might need to have a certificate in a few months to even go to, to your high street store. What is going on, Minister? Yeah, I mean, you, no, look, you're right about mixed messaging. We just talked about speculation with the virus and the effect on people's safety. Well, this is about people's businesses. And as you said, it was about claims coming from number 10 rather than number 10 itself. The discussions are ongoing about what happens with the COVID certification. There's a lot of uh, things around ethics, around the practicalities of uh, even delivering something as big as this. But clearly uh, that work is going on alongside the events research programme, which is looking at those big, ticketed events, which are far harder and more complex to get back to a semblance of normality rather than uh, uh, retail and, and hospitality sectors. Are you ruling, no are you ruling COVID yeah. vaccine um, passport type thing for, for high street stores? That isn't. There's a story on the Daily Mirror, of course, which is talking about passports for shops. I mean, is that untrue? 
Well, what, what I can tell you is that well, there's, there's absolutely nothing in uh, train for step two, which is reopening on, uh, on Monday and anything happening on May uh, the 17th. Uh, but the rest of it is all up for discussion, for debate, because it's a, it's, a, it's a big matter that you're talking about of ethics as well as practicalities, as I'm saying. But the work that's been done is concentrating on the big ticketed events rather than, as you say, your day to day as, shopping. Can, so as, as, as business minister, Paul, out. as business minister, Paul Scott, are you being consulted about this? Are, are, do you know, are you part of these discussions? Because you know, lots of high street stores and countries will be dependent upon what's going on. Are, are you speaking to number 10 directly about this? I'm speaking to the retail sector, I'm speaking to the hospitality sector. We were talking about some international examples just yesterday with a number of pub and restaurant operators uh, and how things yeah, work. What in about Israel. the decision makers within we, government? Are you part of that decision making well, is, unit? Are you, do you know, well, do you I really know what's going on? Like us, are you waiting? Are you just waiting like the rest of us to see what Boris Johnson and whoever he talks to uh, decides in the coming weeks? Or, or are you part of that process? What we're doing, as I say, all the research and the work and the discussions are being taken around now, gathering evidence, and then the decisions, uh, any decisions on any certification programme will take place in, a, in a, a good few weeks' time. So there's plenty of time for that. What we're now looking is consulting, working with those big events, as, as I was saying. I guess what I'm, the point I'm making, what's worrying, what, what's worrying, we don't know, and we are privy to these conversations, and you're the business minister, and you seem to don't even know. You can't tell us what's going on. It feels like you're just well, waiting for I someone can. to tell I'm, you. What I'm telling you is the, what I'm telling you is the, is the all of the evidence is being compiled. There are no dis decisions being taken at this moment in time. So that's, you know, I can't tell you what's not happening, because that's just not happening at the moment. There's lots of research going on throughout April, um, and ready to report back in May. So we've got, you know, a good few weeks to, to go yeah. before any discussions are going to be taken about uh, that might formulate decisions. So that's why that's what I'm telling you now. The rest of it is simply speculation. OK, well, you talk about evidence. What evidence is there that um, indoor hospitality and entertainment van, uh, venues should not be able to open up indoors until at least May the 17th? And yet from... April the 12th, shops, hairdressers, nail salons, libraries, other places uh, can reopen because there is a high court action going against the government at the moment, which is demanding answers as to why, you know, the pub industry, the restaurant industry has been absolutely on its knees and yet they're going to have to wait until at least May the 17th to open indoors. Where is your evidence to prove that that is the right decision and that it's more well, dangerous for them to open on May, uh, April the 12th, Monday, like everybody else. Yeah, no, it's, yeah it's, not about, it's not about being dangerous. I think it's really important that we don't um, get a sense of scapegoating the hospitality sector, uh, who I've worked with very closely for the last year. But the point of that, about the, the roadmap and the way the roadmap works is it's sacrificing that haste that businesses want to get back because for certainty. What we saw, we're learning the lessons of what we saw in the autumn and lead up to Christmas, where the stop, start, stop, start, because of the increase in transmissions, which resulted in the hospitalisation uh, increases, that had to close the businesses down. OK. So, Was it the eat out to help out scheme, you mean? No, no. The, 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 in, the, in the autumn, when we had the tiered structure, and then obviously just before Christmas, we had to, uh, where businesses were able to open for only a few weeks and they had to close close again. It's those that kind of thing that we want to avoid. So we want to make sure that we start slow and steady, taking a step back to see what happens. Now the schools have gone back. We've taken a step back, seen that the evidence is we can then get to the next step. Okay. Again, once non-essential retail and outdoor hospitality opens, again, we'll see what happens with the data and then hopefully nothing will change. We'll be able to get on to May the 17th and, and start indoor hospitality. Each time it's that slow, slow and steady progress to give businesses certainty rather than a stop-start Paul, Paul, Paul Scott, just one final quick question about travel. There's lots of, lots of uh, uncertainty about whether people can take holidays. We're still waiting for more details and that's fair enough. However, we, what we do know for certain is this is from Border Force staff. This is the people who see this every day. They are telling us 8,000 tourists are coming into this country every single day and we are trusting them to go and quarantine somewhere, apparently. Why is that the case when we, are, we can't decide and we are saying there's going to be restrictions for people with British citizens to go on holiday, yet we're allowing 8,000 people a day when we know what's happening in Europe, they're in the middle of a third wave and, ve and we're very unsure where these variants are coming from and whether they're getting into the UK. That is a real concern, isn't it? Yeah, and this is why we've got the process in, in, in place to make sure that they can actually um, get the, uh, 
you know, to, to isolate depending on where they're coming from. And the, we, we're bringing in that uh, traffic light system uh, and we're, we're looking at the foreign travel in, in particular. But you're right to actually highlight the fact that what's happening in Europe, because that's what's happening when the vaccination programme doesn't go um, at the speed that we're going in the UK. And that's what we've got to keep that process going and get people... So why are we letting uh, 8,000 people in then? Why are we allowing them in? And we've got no way of knowing if they are um, isolating. Well, essentially, the checks are being done. Uh, so we, 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 we people well, register. Though, but, 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 come on, Paul Scotty, they're, they're, they're not. Border Force done. are saying border. The line. That, then they're saying that then checks aren't being done. They, well, and they are doing their checks, and they're saying that they're coming. They had one case. They asked somebody. They can't do anything about it. One tourist came from Peru. Says, "What are you coming to the UK for? To visit Big Ben?" He was allowed in. I mean, this is that. There's nothing. The border force can't stop them. So they're doing their checks, but they're allowed to come in. Are you going to take this I up with somebody? Are you going to take this up with the Prime Minister? You know, look, the, ho the, home office, the Home Office and the Border Force will be hearing what you're saying. I can't comment on an individual case that I... That's the first I've but heard they're not about here it. now. And, uh, will you go back and speak to the Home Secretary? Will you speak to the Prime Minister on, on, on our behalf? Because it's a real concern, isn't it? Well, on one hand, you're saying to everybody, be safe and, and, and social distance and be careful. Don't go inside pubs, be outside. But at the same time, you're allowing 8,000 people in a day to come into this country, and we have no well, idea as, where as, they as are. I said, as I said, we've got, we've got processes in place. If people are coming through that, then I know the Border Force will... Clearly, they watch your programme, and... Uh, you know that 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 will definitely be followed uh, followed up, but I can't speak on those individual cases. Okay. But we want to make sure that we can get the balance right between business travel, essential travel, but but not the kind of thing that you're talking okay. about necessarily. Paul Scully, thank right. you.